So Islam Makhlchev is talking about going up to 170 pounds and taking on Colby Covington if Colby is to defeat Leon Edwards. Now, for me, that's very interesting. And it's very interesting for a couple of reasons. Number one, the idea of letting Islam leave 155 and go to 170 would get squashed, spit on, thrown out the door, phone hung up. It would go nowhere. But it is very difficult to tell Islam he does not have the right to challenge at 170 when he accepted not one but two challenges himself. It changes everything, in my opinion. I also think it adds some flair to Colby versus Leon. Like, there's a number of reasons to watch that fight, but why would we ever want to stop, right? Whether you got grudge or you got world championship, you got main event or you got end of the year, whatever, whatever you got, just keep on throwing reasons on. That makes good sense. And that would be very interesting to me. Now, moreover, I want to make sure that you understand how we got to this point. Colby is going to fight Leon. Whoever wins that fight draws in to Blah Muhammad. So Colby came out in an interview three weeks ago and said with a win, he wants to fight Islam. Colby didn't say that to get something going with Islam or because he's got some kind of heat with Islam. Colby's number one motivation was to find another potential opponent to stick this in Blahal's ass. This was done out of pettiness. And the backstory on that is Colby was stated after, right there the night of, in England, after Leon defeated Usman and ended that trilogy, Colby was announced the number one contender. Everybody at 170 got it and stood down. That's the way it goes, right? Once you get the announcement, that's it, and we all move forward. Well, not so fast. Blahal did not accept it. As a matter of fact, he tried to steal it. He tried to take it from him. Blahal did everything right, by the way. Blahal did a great job. There was nothing wrong with what he did, but he gained momentum. He gained momentum to the point that Leon delayed the Colby fight. I mean, Leon's only going to fight twice this year. He's supposed to fight three times a year. He's only going to fight twice this year. He delayed it, and he delayed it because one of the opportunities was to find something going with Mohammed. So now you have Mohammed who didn't respect the announcement. He's saying, ah, no, not so fast. But he actually got teamwork from the champ himself. They found each other. They agreed to fight. In any other scenario, that fight would be made. The only difference was a promise was made to Colby. So now you've got a stubbornness factor. But don't act like Colby didn't see that. Don't act like he's just going to go and hand you some kind of a favor. So he's going to have a real hard time at 170. He's trying to find something interesting. He's trying to drum it up. So he goes after Islam, having no idea if this would work or not. And the only chance that Colby has of the Islam idea working is if Islam himself likes it and responds. And he has. <laughs> right? So it's an interesting spot. It's a, it's a very interesting spot. And... Before you think you know what's going on, before you think, oh, Islam's not going to be able to go up and challenge at 170 and be a champ champ, well, that was actually not something Colby said he had to do. I mean, not for nothing. We're just talking, we're just having fun. But Colby never once said he wasn't willing to go down to 155. He never specifically said where the weight was. He just said after he gets that belt, what he's going to do next. And as far as opening the door and having conversation, I do think that it's rather appealing. It seems like there's enough things to do at 155 with Islam. It does seem like there's enough things to do. There doesn't seem to be anything that we can do that we could then convince ourselves would be remotely competitive. You have Charles Oliveira, who has finished Benny. He has finished Dustin. He has finished. Justin. He has finished Michael. Not just beat him. And he is not remote. So if he's the if he's the best of the bunch, he's not remotely competitive with Islam. 
So I think we could still have some fun. I think we still move the needle. I, I, I'm certainly not saying that there's matches and some parody that we wouldn't want to see, but it's always a challenge to get anybody to watch. I mean, right, as great as John Jones is, he fights in front of a whole bunch of fans dressed up as empty seats. He can't sell out an arena. He is some of the lowest box offices in champion history. Not a knock on him. It's actually just because he's so good and dominant. Roy Jones Jr. went through the same thing in the 90s. Roy Jones will still go and take fights. He was the best fighter of a decade. Nothing but main events. But he never had a money fight. He couldn't make any money. Couldn't make any money. I mean, he, he still got to go and, and fight to this day. It wasn't a knock on him. He was compelling. It was interesting. He rapped on the way to the ring. His sponsorships by Nike. Like, he did everything that he could possibly do. His show butter was in there. He looked cool. He was flashy. He cut an interview. But he never had an opponent that did the same thing. He never did that, had an opponent that could match that or could get any kind of an interest. So I just share for you that there are problems down there at 155 pounds. They're not huge. We could work through them. But there is something to the idea of Covington versus Islam. And these things have a very funny way, right? Once that seed gets planted, they have a very funny way of growing of a very funny way of sprouting. And it's already happening to a degree. I'm not bullish on this. I wouldn't even predict for you that it is going to happen. I'm just reminding you as to why this seed got planted. And all of a sudden, a topic that Colby brought up in an off-brand interview over a month ago is still here. And that off-brand digital interview has now been responded to on ESPN by the champion of the world, Islam Moklachev. It's compelling. And it's very interesting. And I don't know what Islam and his relationship with the weight cut of 155 is like. I don't know. I don't think it's pleasant. And you also have Uzman Nurmagomedov, Bellator's champion, completely undefeated who by rumor could be finding his way to the organization soon. And that question was even posed to Islam. If Usman came over, would you move up a weight class to avoid each other? He didn't answer it directly. But if Makhlchev wanted to move up to 170, I mean, you you for sure could see, if, if Colby was to beat Leon. You for sure could see Makhlchev versus Colby if Makhlchev dropped the 55-pound belt, if he dropped it and announced that he was moving up. That's the only way for sure you can get it. But that is what Makhlchev would do if he fully believed that he could beat Colby. He's not going to go up to 70, get the belt, and then go defend down at 55. Nobody does that. You always defend the heavier belt. Of course you do. Make life better. Make it more comfortable. Of course you do. It's exactly what Volk would have done, right? If Volk would have beat Islam on Saturday, it already would have announced that he's not fighting Ilya. He's not going back to 145 pounds ever. So there is a way. And if that way happens, I mean, just by chance, just if that way happens, I don't ever want you to forget how this got started in the first place. It got started out of spite. Not to Islam, not to Khabib, not even to Ali. It got started out of spite to Muhammad. And that in the business, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call a receipt.